Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Cannibal Farmhouse Farm Ale. All right. Uh, today we're going to bring to you a classic, a vintage classic, 1978's The Evil. It is directed and co-written by Gus Traconis, and he is mostly known for, like, directing a lot of 70s drive-in exploitation type movies and then later on he got into television and did tons of television work like Baywatch for example. <laughs> it's also co-written by Galen Thompson. He wrote the best martial arts movie of all time, Sidekicks. It stars Richard Crenna and he is mostly known for being in Rambo's 1 through 3. Victor Bruno is in this, and I will always know him as being <laughs> King Tut from the 60s Batman TV show. <laughs> Casey Yates is also in this, and we're mentioning her because she's in one of our favorite movies, Convoy. Right? We get this big expanse, right? You see this great big mansion. There's this poor bastard caretaker that's kind of walking up to the house. He's kind of disheveled, yeah. and everything has his pipe. Uh, he has got to take out his flask, you know? <laughs> yeah. He starts hearing this giggling and laughing. It opens the furnace and he's still hearing the giggling and he's, he's looking in and that ain't nothing. All of a sudden whoosh, <laughs> all these flames come out it just burns him to a crisp. <laughs> yeah, running around. From there we get introduced to uh, CJ and his wife Carolyn who are being shown the house. That realtor guy seems like he's all drunk. He's all having trouble <laughs> walking and everything. <laughs> CJ wants to turn the house into like a rehabilitation center for like people with drug addictions. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> While they're waiting by the front door, some boards from the ceiling fall on CJ yeah. though, right? No, nah, don't worry about it. It's just an old house. It was built by a Civil War general, Vargas. He built the house over like these sulfur mines. The native population would steer clear of it. They were scared of the area and they used to call it the Valley of the Devils. Anyways, they decide to buy the place. We get introduced to a few more of the characters. They're super 70s. Pants are all super yeah. 70s with those <laughs> buttons at the side. Bell bottoms and the big <laughs> <Yeah>. lapels. <laughs> One of the dogs that one of the women brought starts freaking out. The dog went into the basement and started scratching at the floor. The dog ends up freaking out again and, and attacks Mary. Carolyn also finds in one of the rooms a diary by the man who built the house, Vargas. It's all blank except one page, which they kind of don't bother to read. So CJ goes down to the basement and kind of sees where the dog was digging a trap door with two handles stuck in the handles keeping it from opening is a cross yeah. so he takes the cross out and then tries to open up these doors and he can't get it open he gets called upstairs and as soon as he leaves boom trap door opens and all his light starts coming out <laughs> light coming out of his mouth <laughs> Then all the doors and shutters and windows all close in the house. The house is all shaking <laughs> and that Felicia's all falling down the stairs and everything. It's like <laughs> shit just hits the fan. They try getting out and they're being like thrown away like physically. When they try to take that table yeah, and like the table just flies back. Yeah. In all this madness, the contractor gets electrocuted by a wire that comes down from the, the ceiling. And one of the girls is like hysterical and of course it's a 70s movie. <laughs> Her boyfriend... Yeah. And cuffs her. And so things kind of calm down a bit and Felicia is upstairs kind of resting on this cot and suddenly she starts being attacked by this invisible force and being again thrown around yeah. and her clothes start ripping off. So they need to get the hell out of this place quick so they try getting a saw to saw the front door open. <laughs> he just kind of looks over his shoulder with this dead stare and his saws, <laughs> his saws his fingers right off. That's not gonna work, obviously. <laughs> One of the guys is a science teacher, and he devises, take these like jumper cables and attach them to all these iron bars that are on the windows and hopefully melt the bars, yeah. I guess. One of the bodies kind of sits up and scares Felicia, and she kind of falls back and gets electrocuted on these bars. Carolyn has been seeing the ghost of what we assume is Vargas. Pointer to po clues. Pointer to clues. Eventually, she gets led to both that cross and the diary which she left behind. Read this diary, and they conclude, well, they got to go back down to the basement and close this trap door. And we're going to end it there 
And if you haven't seen The Evil, you keep watching the movie to find out what happens. It actually gets pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it does. You think it's crazy now. <laughs> exactly. There's a few real memorable things about this movie. The story, mm -hmm. the Vargas character and all that kind of stuff, and, and the mystery behind what's in the basement, what's below that trap door. Once you get there, it's a very memorable part of the movie. And the kills. Exactly, yeah. The kills are huge in this movie. You mentioned the contractor, right? Yeah. But we didn't say how he died. He's walking down the hallway and all of a sudden all these wires wrap around him and drag him up sort of and electrocute him at the same time. <laughs> he like grabs it. Ah! Yeah, and then he gets all wrapped up. For like a super long time. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Another great kill is when they're trying to escape the house, they throw this kind of rope over the side, scale down the house. This wind comes out of nowhere and he's all like, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> and you're just waiting for him to like let go and fall to his demise, but no, he just spontaneously combusts and starts on fire, then falls yeah. to his death. One of the girls just gets dragged up the stairs and into darkness. Yeah. And you don't see what happens to her. Yeah. And then Ray actually ends up getting out of the house. He jumps through a window, celebrating his happy, and he kind of gets up to that statue. And then <laughs> yeah. suddenly he starts sinking into the ground, like in quicksand, and just disappears. Right. It's great. It's like <laughs> yeah. in the rain and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. The effects for all the kills are great too, right? Yeah. They're so simple. When people are being thrown around the room like they get to the door and it's like something just like pushes them yeah it's like it's a great effect like okay you kind of wonder how the hell did they do that it must have been with harnesses and wires and stuff must but, have you, been. but you don't see any of that it looks very violent yeah it looks like a dangerous shoot <laughs> exactly the acting is is really really yes. good yeah. for for a very low budget movie right yeah and that kind of ties into the effects too because the acting sort of completes a lot of the effects. Yeah, it complements right? the simple effect. Right? Yeah, exactly. So the two almost go hand in hand. Haunting movies where things can kind of get unbelievable, you need good acting to keep it believable. Exactly. Everything has to be grounded. Yeah. CJ's wife believes it is ghosts and stuff, mm -hmm. and he doesn't, and ties in the battle of good and evil. God and the devil. God too, and right? the devil, the skeptic, the believer. It's very sadistic, too, yeah. right? Toying with everybody. Yeah. And it's like, you know, with some of the women, he's like smacking them around, stripping them, yeah. having a laugh about it. You can hear yeah. like the laughs in the background yeah. and shit. Speaking <laughs> about the laughing, like the sound effects in this movie are really good. Like when you hear like the right. just roaring and stuff, it's like, ooh, this. This is this thing they got out of the basement <laughs> is angry. He's pretty mad. This thing yeah. is pissed. <laughs> and the music helps with all that, right? Yep. Um, it helps to underline everything perfectly. Very kind of underlying and almost unnoticeable. And yep. suddenly, like it gets like huge in your face and just like bombarding you, and, like just like. The movie and the visuals exactly, yeah. are bombarding you. It all kind of complements itself perfectly. Right. It, it's a mystery, right? Because you don't know what this vision's about. You don't know who, what this evil is yeah. or what's in this basement. With each kill, the movie progresses and you want to keep seeing more and more of yeah. what's uncovered. And the ending of this movie is very, very cool. We're not going to spoil it for you. It does get pretty intense. And <laughs> yeah, it it's, it's a really cool cool ending. There's some cuts of the movie for different like regions of the world that yeah. didn't even have any of that. Really? That scene when they go downstairs in the trap door, some, that was cut in some versions of the movie oh, completely. That's, that's like kind of the whole purpose yeah. of the movie. Which is strange, yeah. <laughs> yes. it, it, it explains everything. Exactly, right? yeah. It does have a Prince of Darkness vibe mm -hmm. too. So if It's got a little bit of the entity in there as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So if you like any of those movies, uh, please check out The Evil. It's one hell of a fun ride. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. Yeah. And until next time, keep drinking.